Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome. So six days ago, I did a poll on YouTube asking you guys if you would be interested in me showing you what's inside my plant supply cabinet. 8% of you voted that it would be boring and 92% of you voted yes, obviously. That you so hopefully those of you that choose to watch this video find something that is useful and it's not too boring to you. So without further ado, here's what's inside of my plant supply cabinet. Okay, so there's a bunch of stuff in here. It's pretty full. As you can see, there's quite a few plant pots, some pest control items, and a bunch of miscellaneous items inside here. So let me show you what I'm working with. So right here, I just have this pot with some pruners, moisture meter. I purchased this moisture meter from Amazon. It's by Classy Casita. And this is like my best friend when it comes to watering plants. One of the mistakes that I made when I was a beginner plant parent is that I would have like a designated day for watering plants. And that really didn't work for me because not all plants have the same needs. As you know, some of them, such as ZZ plants, snake plants, etc., they might not need to be watered, but once a month. And there's other plants that need to be watered twice a week or once a week. So with this moisture meter, I'm able to determine whether the plant needs to be watered at the time. So as you can see, it has dry, moist, and wet. So this takes all the guesswork out of whether I need to water a plant or not. And I like to let my plants get almost close to dry before I even water them anyway, because I want to avoid root rot unless it's a plant such as a calathea that needs extra humidity and moisture then I'll kind of keep it on the moist side at all times. But this is one of my favorite plant tools that I own. And then this thing right here, I use to handle my cacti. Also have a couple bottles of leaf shine. This one's almost empty, so I have that new one. I'll probably finish this one off and get rid of that bottle. I also have some terrarium tools in here. Got this set from Walmart, Better Homes and Gardens. And let's see what else we have here. Have some fertilizer spikes, some extender hooks. For hanging plants. Got some ceiling hooks for hanging plants. I usually use these white ones. Get them right from Home Depot for about $3. And I have a few seeds. Over here, I have a little cactus grow kit. And there's my watering can from Ikea. I love this because it has that thin spout and it's really good for watering succulents and cacti. Also have a watering can back there. It's bigger and I don't, I don't really like to use that too much because it kind of gets messy. So I just use a gallon of water if I need to water larger plants. Here's some garden gloves. Believe, yeah, I got that from, got those from Big Lots, about $3. Over here, I have some mosquito dunks for fungus gnats. I use pretty much all of them, but then I got this right here, the mosquito bits. And so now I pretty much use these whenever I get a new plant. I just sprinkle them into the soil and mix it up in the soil. 
I'm not really sure if it's working, but I'm hoping that it makes a difference. All right, let's move back up here. I also have some Q-tips that I just picked up from the Dollar Tree. I use these in case I see any um, mealybugs and I'll just like dip them in some alcohol and apply it on the mealybug to remove them from the plant. Here I have some fly ribbon, which is also some kind of sticky tape that you can catch fungus gnats on. And then here is actually a bag full of plant labels. So basically this is a bag full of the labels of every single plant that I've purchased that had a label on it. So there's a lot of labels in here for plants that I don't even have anymore. That'll be interesting to go through to see which plants I still have and which ones I don't. Let's see, so these are some of the newer ones here. Birkin, Begonia Rex, Let's see what this is. Shingle Vine, Golden Goddess, Philodendron, Zebra Plant, Bromeliad, White Ant Fetonia, most likely that was from my terrarium, Pea Tree Ivy, Colored Aglaonema. Let's see what else we have in here. Moonlight Philodendron. But yeah, I like to keep those because they usually have the care tips or the care instructions on there. So I like to refer to that. I should probably hmm, organize these a little bit better. Maybe I'll put those in something else as well. But for now, that's where those are. Here I have some super sticky insect traps for fungus gnats as well. As you can see, I've been trying everything for those. And these really do work. They really do if you stick them right into the soil they catch the fungus gnats, but it's pretty unsightly, so I really don't like seeing that, but you know, you can remove them um, when they get full. And then these are some refills for my Fenon um, fungus gnat, UV light catcher. I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but it's just like the catchy machine. It catches the fungus gnats. And I have another video where I talked about that. I'll link that above. All right, let's move down to the bottom shelf. Okay, so we got a couple pots here. I really love these gold pots. I got this round country wood from Michael's one time because I wanted to do a DIY and mount my staghorn fern. So that's still something that I plan on doing. I also have this reindeer moss that I got from Amazon to use when I mount my staghorn fern. Inside these pots, I also have a few macrame hangers. So here's one of the macrame hangers. I think I got this one from Pody.com. And this is the other macrame hanger. It's actually all beaded and I purchased this from Michael's a while back. I have a video on that as well. I really like this. I need to find a place for it. I have some little ceramic pots here. Back there I have a giraffe pot that I've had. Probably one of my first plants that I've ever gotten came in that. Here I have some little clips for staking plants. I get these from Home Depot and I really love to have these because they're easy to use when you stake up the plant. It's just like a little hair clip, but 
they're made for plants. So you put the stake inside the plant and then you just clip this right around the stake and the stem and it holds the plant up nicely. Here's an example of how I have this plant staked up and this is one of the clips right here. So it fits right around the stake and the stem of the plant. I have another one up here. And then here's another plant over here, my Alocasia Pink Dragon. And then I just, there's a stake right there and the petiole right here. And I just clip it right around it and it keeps the plant standing up nicely. Also some of this flexible wire for staking plants. Um, here I have a DIY planner. This was from the Target Dollar Spot. There I have a few more pots, gold and white. Here, let's see. All right, so let's move on to the third shelf. Here's where I keep some of my pest products. This is the one that I use the most. It's almost out. I go through so much of this. The Bonide Insecticidal Super Soap. It says it kills spider mites, thrips, aphids, scale, and white flies. So as soon as I get a plant, I spray it down with water and then I spray it down with this and let it stay on there for a while. I also pour it inside the soil in case there's anything in the soil. So this is like a ritual for me to use this. I go through a lot of it. Also have some peroxide here that I use in the soil to kill fungus gnats. Here I have some indoor plant food by miracle Grow comes with the pump. Also have some individual miracle Grow plant food. I have a few of those actually. Also have some alcohol here for mealybugs. And I have this right here, it's called High Yield. I got this from Amazon. I haven't used it yet. I heard it's really good. It's concentrated. So you have to um, use this with water. I really do need to mix some of this up in a gallon and start using it because the Bonide insecticidal soap can be expensive after a while because it's like over $10 for each bottle and I use so much of it. So this one right here, it says it kills quite a few things. So I think it's more than just what's on here. But yeah, I gotta try to mix this up and get started with this. And then here I just have some extra nursery pots. Those on the bottom are the hanging pots that you usually get from Home Depot. And then those are all of hangers back there as well as a moss pole and also have some trays to catch water and oh there's some grow lights right there with they're like clip on gooseneck grow lights okay moving on to the bottom here i just had some little bottles from ikea that i use for propagation then some extra nursery pots back there, like two and four inches. Here I have some sand left over from when I made my terrarium. I have one exactly like this. I have a video on that. I'll link it above. And down here, just have some driftwood that I bought because I wanted to try to use that in my terrarium, but it was actually a little bit too big. And then I have a bunch of supplies from the Dollar Tree here. More of these fertilizer spikes. Got some plant labels. Flexible tie. More plant labels. And some pruners. Okay, so I actually have three pairs of pruners. And I also got these clips from the dollar store, which are really good for staking up your plants. Came in a few different sizes, only one buck each. Can't beat that. 
And here in this other plastic bag, I have a bunch of stones that I use to top dress my plants. These are more like a natural color, but what I like to use the most is this aquarium gravel in white. And I get it from Walmart for about $5 a bag. And I'll show you what one of my plants look like with that on top. So yeah, all this is either gravel or stones for top dressing my plants. So this is my philodendron iridescence green emerald. And as you can see, this is what the white aquarium gravel looks like on top. It just dresses up the plant instead of seeing the soil. I also have some seed starter pots in here. Got these from the Dollar Tree as well. Also have this spray bottle. It's always good to have a spray bottle in case you need to mix up any insecticides. And I just recently purchased this mister from Amazon because I really like the way that it sprays out. As you can see, it has like a continuous spray to it, which I really like when you just wanna mist your plants and give them a little bit of humidity to make them happy. Also, I have a citronella candle back here. And a mini Zen garden, which yeah, that's not even related. But I also have some more hanging plant extenders. This one's a bamboo one. I got this from the Heavy in Orlando. And then I have another one back here. I think I just got this from, yeah, Vigoro. It's probably from Home Depot. And a couple of steaks, like little thin steaks more pots back there which i don't really use any other colors besides white and terracotta so that's pretty much why the blue's back here i do have another space for my plant pots now i'm using one of the ikea carts for that but it's pretty much at capacity right now. A couple of things that I have on my Ikea Rascog cart are these water globes, which I really love because I like to use these for plants that require a lot of moisture and that need to be watered quite often. I'll show you how I'm using one right now. So as you can see, I have this beautiful Calathea here that I purchased from Lowe's recently and it's actually already growing out new leaves and what I do is I use some filtered water and I just fill up the water globe like I did here it's pretty much full and I just stick it down into the soil just like this and as you can see it's bubbling right now because the plant probably was dry because it was empty right before I filled this up. And so it's watering it right now and it'll just release enough water into it every time when it feels like the soil is dry. And this is actually working out really great for me right now because I haven't even watered this plant once since I purchased it, but I've filled this water globe up about three or four times and so I just pretty much set it and forget it when I see that this is empty I go ahead and I refill this and I don't even water the soil of the plant and it's doing great so far and these are just some of the extra pots that I have this one right here I had gotten from home goods in one of my videos I still haven't used it this one was also from Home Goods. I really like this one as well. But I'm usually switching plants out if they outgrow the pot or whatever. So that's why some of these are here. And I have this one here from Ikea. And then I also have this that I recently got from Walmart. It's a self-watering drop-in planner. Two-part watering system. Haven't used this yet, but I plan on using this 
in case I get a plant that needs a lot of moisture, like a calathea or peace lily, something like that. And I also have this painter's drop cloth in here. And this is what I use when I repot my plants. I just open it up and pot the plant right on top of it and it makes quite a mess, but at least it doesn't get on anything besides the cloth. So this is really helpful. I buy these at Home Depot. And I also have some products that are overstock here in my supplies. This is my favorite all-purpose potting mix. It's by Black and Gold, and this is my go-to whenever I need to pot up any new plants. I also have the Black Gold Cactus Mix. And sometimes I use the Espoma Organic Cactus Mix. I also really love this special orchid potting mix by Better Grow. I like to add this to my soil and it's a really great chunky mix. It contains fir bark, charcoal, and perlite. So you can see in the picture, it's really nice and chunky and I really love that about this. I like to get this all the time and I also use this perlite by miracle Grow, just to add to the soil if I need a little bit more drainage. I also have a bag of this Della Tanks soil mix that I purchased from Amazon. And honestly, I use this one time in one of my plants that I got from Equigenera and the next day the plant went into shock. So I've never used this again. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with this soil mix, but since that happened, I just never used it again. And I also have a bag of Lekka that I purchased a few years back from Ikea. I actually haven't seen these here in a while. I don't know if they started selling these again in the store, but I never even opened it. I do plan on opening it soon because I want to do a video where I transfer one of my plants that I have propagating in water to Lekka. It's actually this variegated Burl Marks that I've been propagating in this bottle of water. I actually got this from my daughter's house in Orlando and I just stuck it in this bottle of water because that's all I had at the time. And as you can see, it's good and ready to be transplanted. So I figured I'd give Lekka a try and hopefully nothing goes wrong because I really, really love this plant. I actually purchased this plant maybe a year ago and I ended up giving it to my daughter and she put it on her patio and ever since then the plant has been thriving and so I was able to get a piece off of it from her and there's a couple of leaves growing in there as well so I need to hurry up and make that transfer so look out for that video. I think that's all. Now I want to see if I can get this thing a little bit more organized. So there you have it guys. That's what's inside of my plant supply cabinet. I hope I didn't bore you too much. If you have any questions about anything that I showed you, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks to all of you who participated in this poll. I really appreciate your input. That lets me know what type of content you guys are interested in. And also feel free to leave comments down below on any other type of videos that you're interested in me doing for you guys. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. Comment and subscribe for more plant-related videos. Until next time, thank you so much for watching and take care.